What's up, everybody? I'm TJ. And I'm Kelsey. And we are the, the Nashville, Nashville Wine Duo. Duo. What's up, everybody? We're back. Man, it feels good to be back. I feel like I haven't been on the mic in weeks. It's only been like a week, but it feels week. like forever. It's been. We've had a lot of stuff going on though. Wild, wild personal stuff. Week. Yeah, that I don't. I don't think we should fully share on here, but just a lot of things that have been going on in yeah, our life. Yeah, real life stuff. Real life, real life stuff that has been um, taking up a lot of our time on top of working just a ton, nonstop. Yeah, and then um, just trying to schedule a lot of like wine stuff to do, and but it's actually made it. It's made it kind of hard just to put out content but <laughs> it has i mean really yeah. we haven't even some, a lot of the time we haven't seen each other yeah it's true. that's been kind of hard this it's past true. week how can we have a podcast when we haven't seen each other yeah it's difficult <laughs> but we're here now we're drinking some awesome wine which we're going to talk about a little bit later but um which i'm using right now the glass to cool off my mosquito bites that i keep itching did you get some mosquito bites i have like tons when yeah. when did you get mosquito bites um when we were, I think it was when we were outside at that wine tasting the other night for the bachelorette party. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I felt like it happened like right after that. I had like All right. eight. So Kelsey yeah. and I got hired to do this awesome bachelorette party. And um, they took over their parents' house, which is in Brentwood, Tennessee. Took it over. They took it over. They kicked them out. The parents went to like their other house in Dayton, Ohio, I think they said. And um, they took over the bride's the bride and the bachelorettes uh, took over the house and uh, had a pool, beautiful pool with a waterfall and everything. And Kelsey and I were hired to come do a, well, we picked whites, rosés, and sparkling wine for the wine tasting. And it was so much fun. We yeah, the house was so cool too. Um, you know, it's back in that area of Brentwood where there's still like a lot of like land. So, you know, it's like back, you feel like you're back in the woods kind of. And they, they her parents had built the house over 40 years ago. And, um, they had this just beautiful land and like in out back, it was like, you felt like you were looking into a forest and they feed the deer. Oh, the minute we got out of the car. There yeah. There's all these deer or two deer just staring at us yeah. like 20 feet away. And she said they'll come up onto their deck sometimes and yeah. they, yeah, they give them water and they feed them and, and I don't then, know. So we did the, t the wine tasting. We had eight bottles for them Yeah, and, uh, we did the wine tasting out by the pool and, um, and the deers were just uh, watching us the entire time doing the doing the wine tasting. It was pretty funny. Yeah, they were. <laughs> it was really cool. Um, and I loved how many. This is one of my favorite tastings. These ladies asked like so many questions, which I think made it really fun. And then also made me be like, wow, I actually know a lot more than I realized because I felt like we answered every question. And I was yeah, like, oh you man, know a lot I, more than people give you credit for. I think I do. Um, All the wine industry snobs, you know. Yeah, they think that, yeah, I don't know what they think. Because <laughs> you work at Trader Joe's, you don't know. Yeah, we get nothing. that, we get it sometimes. But no, I was like, okay, I actually, yeah. So a lot of the questions she asked were really good and very interesting. And they were very attentive the whole time. And it was neat that one of the Sauvignon blocks we picked out called White Haven. Um, Marlboro, New Zealand Sauvignon Yeah, Blanc. I found it at a local store for around $20. And she, the late, the girl that um, orchestrated the whole. She hired us. She hired us. Yeah um Sister. she said she was, was crazy she after we talked about it she said i had just had this at like last weekend at a wedding and i couldn't stop drinking it because of how much i loved it and then i couldn't remember the name and she was like this is it yep. this is the wine so uh yeah look for white haven sauvignon blanc because it really was it's oh, probably it was one awesome. of my favorite sauvignon blancs i've had in a while oh it was awesome awesome sauvignon yeah. blanc Probably one of the best i've tried in a while so, so good yeah. for the price like that's like one where i'm like okay if i were out i'd easily would spend like $15 a glass for that. Like yeah. that was good. Yes. And I was actually talking to Chris over at Vintage Vine 100 yesterday and told him about that and the Sauvignon Blanc that we tried. And oh, he did? was like, I love that. He's like, he's actually had it too. Um, I think he said Total Wine has it, but um, just a, it's a solid Sauvignon Blanc for sure. Yeah. And it, I don't know. It just, it just tastes like a lot of care went into it. I just loved it. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, that was so fun. That was fun. So yes, we do get hired for wine tastings and that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's happened more now that COVID's kind of ending. Yeah. Um, so but... last night at Vintage, I was working at Vintage Vine 100, the wine bar in Cool Springs last night. 
And um, wait, is this? Are you wanting to just talk about? I'm talking about my yeah. I'm talking, you're talking about, about your my, life right now. Okay, about okay. About so we're life. going into that for you talking yeah, about your life. Yeah, okay, sorry, cool. I got a vent because it's right. been on my mind since it happened last night. Uh huh. I've told you about it, but um, yeah. So I, this couple came up to the rooftop. I was on the roof, and they were really cool. They're like, it's our first time here. They ordered some food. They ordered some flights. The husband ordered some bourbon. Um, so we're having fun. I'm keeping their glasses full and their water full, blah, blah, blah. And uh, they're on the couch. And, um, the manager came up to me and he was like, Hey, I've got uh, six people that want And just to... so you guys know, the couch is like, explain like the, so the couch the probably that, holds what it looks like. It's like you go up to the roof and yeah. So there's like an L shaped couch, which holds, holds probably six to eight B- people depending on yeah. people. If you're gonna but be this, the, the couch, they were on the couch currently and there were, there were just two of them but they had been there for half hour or so. But the manager comes up and he's like, Hey, I got a six top. Um, can they have the couch? And I was like, well, there's two people there. And he's like, well, I'm just going to go ask them if they can kind of move over to another table. So he goes up there while I'm downstairs and asks them, I come up and he's moved them to another table and they are pissed. And uh, long story short, I don't know if it were me, I just wouldn't have cared. I would have been like, okay. Big, yeah. big, I don't know what's what the difference between, Especially if you're two people, it's kind of like, I don't think it's that. And if they were upset, why didn't they tell him no? Right. Why didn't they just say like, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Why did, why, you know what I mean? Like if you're mad, then just say like, I'm sorry, we really don't want to move. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, and so I came up right as they were kind of sitting down at the new table, still on the rooftop, just an actual table. And I said, Hey guys, I'm so sorry that happened. Like I didn't have anything to do with that. And the the wife continues to go on and say how that's just so rude. And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, I'm just sorry that happened. And, uh, within three minutes, I'm walking around the roof, just checking out everybody, making sure they have water and stuff. And she signals me down, gives me the hand motion, you know, the, the Mm -hmm. me yeah, come over here. And I come over and she goes, I need our check. And I was like, Okay. And I already knew what was going to go down. I was like, these people are going to stiff me on my tip. And they had spent almost $100 with their food and wine and everything. And uh, she, she, you know, we have those little handheld things that we hand to them and mm-hmm. they put the card in and sign and leave tip. And sure enough, she handed me back and I walked away for a second and looked and I was like, zero dollars on the tip. So, I've been processing for 24 hours now. Well, not mm-hmm. 20, 20, 18 hours, whatever, however long it is. And I'm just like, what kind of human being does that? Like, I had nothing to do with that situation. Yeah. I was, you know, I didn't ask them to move. So she totally took her frustration and anger out on well, me. Well, and even again, going back to if she was really that upset, why not, like, just say I don't want to move? I don't know. I yeah. Just- but I told you, like, her leaving zero tip does not affect the manager no. that asked her to move. No. Or the establishment. No. She paid her bill. They the the company got paid. Right. You're you're screwing me over, and I'm the one who delivered good service the entire time and apologized yeah. for everything happening. Like I just caught I yeah, I was super frustrated. I I just thought that was really, really uncalled for and petty. Yeah, unfortunately, I I don't know. I think there's so many people that have like n- n- zero like understanding of what it's like to work in a customer service job. Like, and I do actually think retail and serving they're both customer service, and you both you have to deal with people, but it's different in the ways you will. But it's still like if you haven't experienced that, like I don't feel like you can. I don't know. Like that's why I think those people just like whatever they don't get it, and it's that that doesn't make it right. No, you know. But, but if you go out to eat, you go out for drinks, you're going out to have an experience anywhere, Nashville, wherever, wherever you're at in yeah. the freaking world, you're going out for an experience. Kelsey is now putting the glass of wine on her bites. I was doing that earlier. <laughs> I know, but you're. I can't. I'm trying to communicate I'm how sorry, frustrated it I am. Hurts. Uh, but it, okay, I'm venting. I'm 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 on a soapbox right now. If you go out to have a good time, uh huh, yeah, you're gonna spend money out. I always tip. So servers, that's how they make a living. Yeah, they, the, they the, make two dollars yeah. an hour. Like you're gonna you're when you go out, you're expecting a service and 
you are out for yourself. They don't all always make two dollars an hour, but it varies. It's very little. Very yes. little. Come on, yes. they're not making. Yeah, no, they're an not hourly making, wage. No, they're not making an hourly wage. you can wage. live on. They live off tips. And again, majority of Americans that go out, you are having fun. You need to be tipping. Come on. No, that's, I mean, like, crazy. well, and I think you were raised to just like. I've I always mean, tipped twenty percent. I mean, and least. not even just like servers. At like least. you tip, you tip like everybody. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'll tip everybody. Like He'll I'll tip go anybody out. that's like helpful. And that was like before tip. I was. I worked for the wine bar. That's true. Yeah. I've always tipped, and my my thing Your is like. My mama taught you that. My mom though. taught my mama taught me that. She did. She's a big tipper. She's a big tipper. She, she tips, tips everybody: hotel people, restaurant people. Yeah. I mean, and for everybody. Anybody and that goes just, to try to do any kind of extra service. Totally. She'll and I it. believe that'll come back to you. Like if you're nice to people and you go above and beyond and like yeah, I give too. it to people, like it'll come back to you and, and people will and not just financially. I'm talking like just in life, like yeah. good things will happen. Like if you put it out there and put positivity out there, like you're going to have someone that no, like, I agree with that. Know? And I'm going to go to side note and then we can go back to this. Go, to side go note. on that uh, off of that or whatever. I read a story the other go day on and off of that. Yeah. I was on next door. I have kind of a problem with like going on the next door app, and I just love. There's so much drama, drama. and like I don't know. It's even like better than anything on like any of the other platforms because these neighbors just are really they They just just will go off. off. But there was a story on there that was really cool. This guy went on there and he just said, "I just want to say I want I got to put this out to this person if they're out there." But he said, "Um, I was at the laundromat and um." I was doing the laundry for like my wife and I, and, um, you know, we just haven't been to aff- been able to afford a, a new washer or dryer. And so I just, I just go and do our laundry like every other day. And I'm usually there for a few hours. And he said a man walked in and handed him, well, the man walked in and said, do you have hookup dryer, washer and dryer hookups in your house? And he was like, yeah. And he said, go buy yourself some. And there was $1,200 what? of cash inside the envelope. And the guy just said in the in the in the message, he said, I just want to say, whoever you are, you don't know like how much this touched me in my life. And see, that is what I'm talking he about. He gave twelve hundred dollars and like what went into a laundromat just to just to ask somebody randomly, yeah. do you need yeah. do you have hookups in your That's house? That's amazing. Because here you go. I'm gonna see. And the guy said he's like that that I, he said it really like renewed my faith like in humanity yeah. in like a massive way. And I'm like, that is an amazing it almost made me cry. I was Hell like, That's yeah. an incredible story. Yeah. But I would like to think if I had tons of money, just like just leaps and bounds, mm-hmm. that I would be that kind of person that just yeah gave it well. To, and then it away. I was reading the comments, and everyone was saying stuff like that. Like that's amazing if you have money, like just giving it back like that. And someone said this also happened to my friend. She was she said a, a similar guy. People were looking at like mattresses or something mm-hmm. somewhere, and a guy came up and said like something and gave them a cash gave yeah. them cash so i don't know i'm like that's just that, really neat that kind of gives me hope about the uh the future of uh i think society so i mean like i i would yeah I, I just think you know if you are someone out there and you have a lot of money i don't know i think like if you have something like that you can do like why not make yeah. someone's day and, well after that happened with me with the stiffing i was like okay i lost like 20 bucks or whatever it was however much they would have tipped me and I was like, man, I wish somebody would come behind them and just kind of like overgive. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Because I always try and give like top notch service, but it didn't happen. But doesn't mean it has to happen. I was just like, man, when when people suck, maybe there are those people that kind of overcompensate for the sucky people in the world. You know what I mean? Because I, yeah. I just thought that was like a horrible human being thing to do to me. But I have to process it and kind of just let it go. Yeah. <laughs> maybe next week i'll be over it <laughs> i get you though i don't know i've had to like let go of stuff i haven't had anything to i think the only thing that happened to me this week that was like again we've had a lot of stuff going on okay like our dog passed away we talked about that and then there's just been some family family health family stuff, health stuff yeah. and then other like personal other stuff personal with our stuff. family yep. that have been really difficult um and just like it's just felt like boom, 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 like thing after thing after thing. And then on top of that, we're just, we're juggling, feels like three jobs, three jobs yep. with him at the wine bar, Trader Joe's, and then the wine duo, the wine stuff that we're doing. Um, So I had kind of a breakdown at work the other day and was just like, I needed to leave. Um, 
And my manager, he's just hilarious. So like I came into work after we found out some news and I just like tried to go in and I immediately was like, I just need someone to tell me that I can go home <laughs> like a manager because I was just so upset. And like I went up to one of our managers and his name is Tom and he's just like, bro, bro. Like that's how he is. He's always he's like a hype guy, but he's the sweetest guy too. <laughs> Hardest hype. working dude, like so kind. He's totally literally busts his butt off he's from arizona obsessed with arizona if you were to bring up arizona you could talk about arizona for probably 45 minutes um this guy's just so nice though like seriously and has had also a lot of stuff going on in his life but like you never even know it because if he just pushes through it but i went up super positive so positive so i went Except up, for this moment. <laughs> i went i went up to him and i was like tears in my eyes and i was like describing the situation of everything that was going on and i was just like upset and I'm like I just don't know if I can make it today I just don't know what I'm gonna do and he just went bro bro just go sit in the freezer <laughs> and I was like um and then he just kept like joking he's like is it this bro like just go chill in the freezer just sit in that freezer bro it'll chill it'll go away and I was like I need to get away from you right now. <laughs> I couldn't handle it so I just walked away <laughs> but um then we joked about it with another manager so now that's kind of like a thing going yeah, on so now all the time I'm telling Kelsey to go, go, sit, in the go sit in the freezer at home um and the funny part is is Tom actually writes the freezer order at Trader Joe's and I'm like maybe that's why you have the freezer order so you can go so sit funny. in the freezer but then um two days later again it's been a rough week I oh we opened at six in the morning and I'm bagging for somebody at 8 a.m. This is after being there for two hours. And, you know, usually if you're the bagger, like you'll talk to the person, but it's 8 a.m., right? So you're kind of tired. And there's a coworker of mine named Shannon who's like very talkative. And he was talking to the, the customer. And then I'm just bagging. I'm looking down. And the guy says, Kelsey. And I look up and he's like, you really don't look so good this morning. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, I'm tired. Yeah. And he went there's ways to fix that. You need to go get yourself some coffee. And I just was like, no, this no is not, male. you don't tell someone they're no not looking so good. Should, I mean, no male should ever say that to a female. Anybody, nobody should. And no, yeah. Like you just don't say that to a human being. I, you know, like, I wouldn't go like, up and tell anyone. Hey, you look like shit. Hey, you're not looking you so good this morning. That. You could go drink some coffee. <laughs> and then he just like started laughing. And then Shannon looked at me and then I don't know. Everyone I told that story to, though, this was their. Yeah, they said it was it an old man. That's what that would. And been I my said, guess. yeah. So, like, what do you think that is? Like the stigma around like old men doing that kind of thing? Because it's is that the most common? I would think. I would think. And they were like, it's that boomer generation. But I'm like, so does that mean millennial men when they get to be old aren't going to be like that? I think. And I said, I think it's just a person thing. I don't know. Could be a person thing. An older person, though, like an older male that hasn't had too much female interaction, or maybe he had boys, or or yeah, someone said that too. Maybe like he that. had all boys. Yeah, yeah, because you had all. You were like, I would not. I have all daughters. And my dad uh, yeah. does. So I'm like, I don't well, know. And I think it's a human being thing. I think too. it is too. Because you're you're sense. You're, like, you're not gonna talk like that to someone. It didn't make me cry or anything like that. I was just kind of no. like, I don't need to hear you telling me that I look. Bad yeah, I don't or, like. Need, yeah. I don't need to deal with. No, this. I think it's a human being thing first and foremost. But then I think it might be like. A, situational thing where they didn't have yeah certain things in their life or they weren't around a lot of females or they weren't like yeah maybe they didn't have daughters or they had boys so it's like toughen up yeah. kid suck it up but again that's up. i don't know i think that's another aspect of like working in customer service it's like if you work a corporate job i mean maybe one of your coworkers would say something like that to you like joking around but like it's different when it's like you have strangers that just come through your line and just say things oh to but you. dude i would every situation where I'm in it with a, with a crappy person, I wish I knew where they work so I could go into their situation, That's their environment. Addictive. That's not good. I know. And I gotta, no. I gotta work on that. No, no. But I'm like, where, where do you work? Cause I want to come into your place. No, you don't do that. I know. No. I, gotta, I gotta pray against that. Yeah. The other day. I'm not going to say I haven't thought about that. Cause I'm like, dude, the other day, I think we were even praying about something and then you started praying some like vindictive prayer. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you were praying about something. And he was like, I pray that bad things will come upon them. First of I was all, like, stop first doing of that. All, I don't pray like that. I, 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 I don't pray like that. Oh but I was angry when I was praying and I'm a human being. Damn okay. It. Yeah. And then I cut you off and I was like, stop you did. That. You're like, what the, what are you doing? Yeah. Oh man. Anyway. 
so it's I'm a, been I'm a work in progress. We all are. But yeah, it's been a lot. It's been a lot of things going on and emotions and learning. All right. Let's talk about this wine. Yeah. So we got hit up from this app in Nashville. I think I don't know if they're all over the place, but anyway, they're in Nashville and it is a app on your phone and it is called Hot Poppy. Hot Poppy. And H O T P O. No. H O T. That's what I said. H O T. No, H O T. That's what I said. No, H O T. Okay, you go ahead and say it. That's what I said. Hot Poppy. H O T P O P P Y. Like poppy seed. Yeah, like poppy seed. And they reached out to us and they're like, hey, if we send you a gift card, can you buy some wine on our app and kind of just talk about the experience on the app and everything? So we did. And we bought like six bottles with the um, gift card that they sent us. And it showed up that day. So we ordered six yeah. bottles of wine, used the gift card that they sent us. The wine shows up right. uh, five hours later, six hours later so on our doorstep. It is true that certain liquor stores have been able to deliver wine yeah. within a certain radius, yeah. right? But right. this is totally different from that. Like That's why when we posted about it, we were like, Nothing like this has ever been in Nashville because it's true. There hasn't hasn't been like a form of like DoorDash or something like that that will go out and get wine and bring it to you. Yeah, but they're doing groceries, um, vegetables, food, um, wine. So anything that you can get at a like a farmer's market or a grocery store, they have it shows up on their app, and then you can just do your shopping from there, and it shows up. Um, you can pick it up at the farmer's market the day of, or you can have it delivered. And I think it's if it's over like $60, they deliver for free. So um, very cool app. We got six bottles of wine and we are currently drinking one of the bottles that we ordered from them. Mm -hmm. And this is a local uh, urban winery here in Nashville that, that does this Prosecco. It's called Love in Exile. Yeah. And um, we've heard about Love in Exile. I think it's over... In East Nashville or that way? Yeah, I think North it's Side pronounced Soriso. Soriso, yeah, yeah, is the Prosecco. Yeah, the one that we're drinking. But yeah, but I'm talking about the urban winery. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. yeah. So that's over North Nashville. I think it's in East Nashville or somewhere over there. And it's this cool urban winery restaurant that, again, we're, we want to get out there and interview them and talk to them. But we, we just haven't it's connected a, with them. It's 715 Main Street. Sure. That's where it's located. Yeah. I'm looking at it. I have no idea where that's at. But Okay, well, um, I'm checking. She's checking right now. She's doing research. Intel. It is in East Nashville. Boom. Nailed it. Yes. Um, Next to East Park and Donuts. Oh. East Park Donuts and Coffee. It's right by there. And Five Point Pizza. Oh, I like Five Point Pizza. Yeah, it's right by there. Five Point Pizza is solid. Yeah. So it's close to there. The like the bar. Yeah. Yeah. We don't make it out to East Nashville very much. Wish often. we were closer to East Nashville because that's honestly where most of the bomb food in the entire city is. Yeah. But, but so we want to love an exile. If you're listening to this, we want to interview you guys and we want to because we've we've seriously tried. We bought like four bottles of love and exile wine on that. Yeah, app. they're good. So when we ordered them. Yeah. Four, we have four of the six. And we've tried other ones love before that wines. we've been yeah. like, oh, my gosh, it's good wine. So love and exile. We want to come out and interview you guys and we dig what you're doing, but we just have never connected. For, yes. So whatever. Um, but we're drinking this Prosecco DOC. I and, love it. Uh, it's really good. 11 percent alcohol. Cool bottle or cool label. What do you think? Oh, I really like it. I love it. A little bit of sweetness. Little, tiny bit, but good. Tiny little bubbles, like the song. Mm-hmm. Um, refreshing. I think Prosecco it's is really always nice. going to be more of just like, if you're going to go for a bubbly experience, it's like a chill bubbly experience. That's probably why it's so often paired with brunch. Because, yeah, it's not it's not like overly dry. You're still going to get that like, it's a, it sometimes can be, yeah, with we've a little... Had, We've had some dry more, but Prosecco, more, we but have, I mean, but majority. It tends I mean, to be the, more fruity. It tends to be more fruity and a, and a hint of, yeah, sweetness. A little bit. Yeah. This is good. But I love it. This, this love is it a great, great Prosecco. Love in Exile. Killed it. And um, well, yeah, we're we're happy with this one for sure. Uh, yeah. Really like it. So we'll post a picture on our... On our podcast. Yeah, we're setting up the, the pool today. And TJ was like, I'm going to go get a picture of it in front of the pool. Yeah, so I got a picture of the Prosecco with the That's pool. That's how you so. talk. <laughs> Bro, go sit in the, <laughs> go go sit in the, the freezer. freezer. 
Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so tonight we're going to go hang out with some old wine friends from our... They're not old. They're just wine friends. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're from the days of the tasting room. So they're oh, old wine... Yeah. I was going to say old wine ago. friends from the tasting room. not that long ago. It was just room. last year. But I want to sound like an oldie, you know, like, hey, I want to go hang out with my old friends. What? Yeah, it's my old voice. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Anyways, we're hanging out with some friends How tonight. How much have you had? <laughs> <laughs> Next week, oh well, not next week. I don't know. We we'll see when we do the next podcast. But we'll talk about. We just visited some um, wineries along the Tennessee Wine Trail. So next oh, time we yeah. do a podcast, we'll go over all of that and. Yeah, maybe we'll do like a bonus podcast and just talk about those. Well, yeah, because like I think little... we plan on doing a post on our Instagram. So when we yeah. post about it, maybe we'll do a follow up podcast. Yeah, and, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. So for all you Tennessee people that want to go experience some wineries, we did like a little uh, day trip to two wineries. Yes. And that was fun. We worked with the Tennessee Wine Association. Yeah, it was and, really uh, fun. And visited, you know, you got to think about it. It is not California wine. You got to like totally have it, your mind out of the box. But yeah, yeah, let's talk about that next time because there's a lot to go over. Yeah, we'll do a bonus podcast or something. That'd be fun. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. What? Cool. Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. I thought you said something else. What do you think I said? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, all right. This was fun. Cheers. It's good to be back in the saddle again. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Cheers. Cheers.